ruminant animals are somewhat unique in their ability to use forage as their primary feed. However, the quality of that forage will impact animal performance. I'm Dr. Jessica Williamson, the Penn State Extension Forage Specialist. And I'm Dr. Tara Felix, the Penn State Extension Beef Specialist. And we want to talk to you about forage quality. Forage quality should not be confused with forage nutritive value. Forage nutritive value generally refers to the chemical composition of the plant itself, the energy, crude protein, and fiber components, things you might expect to see on your forage analysis, for example. Forage quality refers to a broader definition that not only includes forage nutritive value, but also forage intake and how palatable that forage is. Forage quality is more reflective of the potential feeding value of the forage than the forage nutritive value alone. Forage quality is thus relative to the nutritional needs of the class of livestock that is consuming it. For example, the sheep on the left is in mid-gestation and is fully mature and not in lactation. However, the heifer on the right is still growing, in addition to trying to support a pregnancy. Thus, the heifer's nutritional needs far surpass those of the mature ewe on the left. Because of this, the quality of forage that they consume should be adequate to meet each of their individual needs. At the early stage of growth, plants are vegetative and have very high crude protein and energy concentrations, and the forage quality overall is very high. The digestibility of plants depends greatly on the stage of maturity, the species, and the variety of the plant itself. This is because plants are made up of millions of cells, and within those cells, there are cell contents that include proteins and sugars and are completely digested by the ruminant animal. Surrounding the cell contents are cell walls. The cell wall makes up anywhere from 40 to 70% of the cell. Unlike the cell contents, the digestibility of the cell wall is highly variable. Cell walls include cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin, and pectin. In general, these components are referred to or thought of as the fiber components or fiber fraction of a forage. Generally speaking, the more mature a forage is, the greater the cell wall or fiber fraction the plant has. The cell contents, or sugars, starch, and pectin, are found in the greatest concentrations in immature vegetative forages. The cell walls, or hemicellulose and cellulose, are moderately digestible. The cell wall also contains lignin, which is completely indigestible and is primarily found in very mature forages. As the plant matures, the proportion of the cell wall increases relative to the cell contents. As a result, digestibility and palatability potentially decline because of the increasing lignification in that plant. But as the plant matures and grows, the yield or dry matter available for feed increases as well. So the trick is to balance these two factors. Because these proportions between cell contents and cell walls or the fiber fraction are so important to how the animal uses the forage, the fiber fractions of forage are analyzed as part of the determination of the forage nutritive value. The most frequently discussed fiber analyses for the ruminant animals are NDF and ADF, also known as neutral detergent fiber and acid detergent fiber. Neutral detergent fiber contains the cell wall contents hemicellulose, cellulose, and lignin, and a little pectin. Acid detergent fiber is composed of cellulose and lignin only. Both are inversely correlated with digestibility. In other words, as the NDF and ADF concentration of the forage increases, the ability of the animal to digest that forage declines. As forages mature and the fiber fractions increase, the material will be less digestible and it will pass out of the rumen more slowly. So the animal will be able to eat less. This is because the rumen is physically restricted to a specific capacity. Starch and sugars are rapidly fermented, generally within the course of a few hours. 
but it can take 24 to 48 hours to digest the NDF and ADF fractions of plants. Thus, the fiber fraction is inversely correlated to digestibility and linearly correlated to forage maturity. Protein, on the other hand, is inversely correlated with forage maturity. As forages continue to mature, the concentration of crude protein to dry matter declines. This picture depicts cows grazing a mature pasture. At this point, you may be asking, what can you do to improve your forage quality? Because of the relationship between fiber, digestibility, and forage maturity, forage maturity at the time of grazing is the most important factor that we can control to improve forage quality. Forage species and forage variety should be considered when managing forage quality as well. Familiarize yourself with forage species and varieties within species and make your planting decisions based on the needs of your operation. Other factors that can play a role in forage quality are pests and climate. However, these are more difficult to control. Now that we understand the difference between forage nutritive value and forage quality, we can investigate ways to best match the forage quality to a specific class of livestock that we may be working with.